This is the Washington Times front page for Tuesday, October 5th, 2021. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. President Biden is urging Congress to raise the debt ceiling, blaming Republicans for the impasse and warning of a potential economic calamity if the U.S. defaults on its financial obligations. Jeff Mordock and Harris Alec report the president accused Senate Republicans of playing Russian roulette with the economy by threatening to use their filibuster power to block Democrats from raising the debt ceiling before an October 18th deadline. The president described the Republicans' position as hypocritical, dangerous, and disgraceful, even though Democrats control the House, Senate, and presidency. Biden also added that raising the debt limit isn't connected with his multi-trillion dollar spending plans, only previous obligations that the government has. Raising the debt limit is about paying off our old debts. There's nothing to do with any new spending being considered. There's nothing to do with my plan for infrastructure or building back better. Zero. Speaking of those spending plans, Jeff and Harris also have the story about where they stand now and how they might change. Democrats are being thwarted by strong party divisions over how to move forward on key parts of the president's $3.5 trillion social spending bill and may have to cut some provisions from it to get it passed. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the president held a virtual meeting with progressive Democrats on Monday to try to negotiate a lower price tag on that package. Psaki said the discussions included recognition that the package is going to be smaller than originally proposed. To secure both the social spending and bipartisan infrastructure bills, Democrats will have to find common ground. That appears unlikely when it comes to the $3.5 trillion package, at least for now, which still has too high of a price tag for West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin and Arizona Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema. In foreign affairs, China's military has stepped up provocative aerial incursions near Taiwan. Bill Gertz reports the Taiwanese Defense Ministry said China sent 58 warplanes, including 12 nuclear-capable bombers, inside the island's air defense zone. The incursions Monday, in two waves, were the largest so far in what appears to be a Chinese coercion campaign. Chinese state media called the flights routine and normal military exercises aimed at deterring Taiwanese forces and foreign interference. Taiwan is an island state 100 miles off the southern coast of China that China considers to be part of its sovereign territory. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. Don't have access yet? Visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George and get 25% off your annual subscription. Staying with foreign affairs, the withdrawal from Afghanistan has sparked a long-awaited reckoning for NATO and fueled major questions about the role of the alliance and to what degree it can rely so heavily on U.S. leadership and military assets. Then Wolfgang and Guy Taylor report NATO watchers see a deep sense of unease across Europe. High-stakes issues rose to the surface in a matter of months and threatened some of NATO's cohesiveness following the fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban. The chaotic U.S. exit also shook Europe's faith in America's steadiness and reliability, potentially chipping away at the foundation of the transatlantic partnership that has stood since the early days of the Cold War. Specialists say a series of meetings this week with NATO Secretary Jen Stoltenberg in Washington may not be enough to change the perception that the U.S. relationship with NATO is changing rapidly. Europeans say President Biden says the right things, but the first 10 months of his administration have been unexpectedly rocky for transatlantic ties. And finally, the federal government is building expensive tools to fight enemies that use tweets and memes instead of bullets and bombs. Ryan Lovelace reports the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, said it plans to spend $59.5 million in the next four years on researchers making algorithms and gathering content. The content, including tweets, memes, political ads, and blog posts, is for the government's influence campaign awareness and sense-making program. Program manager Brian Kettler says the goal is to give the government tools to provide an early warning of foreign influence. He said agencies could use the tools to help the United States spread its narratives around the world and to stop online content from going viral. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And follow us on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Just search Washington Times. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.